welcome back you all and thanks for joining me once again for math and science for young children. In each of our sessions, we will be reviewing math, science, and early childhood topics. Our goals for this session are to understand the application of the constructivist learning theory in early childhood settings, to apply principles of sorting and classifying by different attributes to rocks, and identifying components of an engaging, high interest science center. Make sure you download the note sheet to go along with this video and stick around as we learn all about math and science concepts for young children. A constructivist perspective focuses on attention of the child's contribution to the construction of knowledge. Constructivism is based on the idea that children are actively engaged in building theories about the world and the way it naturally works without the aid of direct instruction. From a construct, excuse me, from a constructivist perspective, children are natural scientists and if given the opportunity, will engage in their own experimentation and problem solving. The role of the teacher is to provide context within which such experiments can occur and to facilitate theory building by providing helpful materials and experiences. The processes whereby children apply and extend their understanding are of critical importance. Therefore, a constructivist curriculum model should be derived from the child's own thought processes and activities, rather than content-oriented topics or themes which are arbitrarily chosen by adults. Since children are viewed as actively inquiring natural scientists, the curriculum model should encourage experimentation. Materials, activities must allow for many possibilities. The curriculum model should provide guidance by creating learning situations that encourage a diversity of approaches. Such settings will let children produce and test many different ideas and hypotheses, creating an environment that actively supports the theory building. The three main principles of a constructivist approach are, number one, learners do not acquire knowledge that is transmitted to them, rather they construct their own knowledge through activities and make it their own. Number two, learners come to educational settings with very different experiences, ideas, and approaches to learning. We call this prior knowledge. And number three, Young children are social beings influenced by and influencing others around them. This session's exemplar activity goes along with earth science and exploring rocks. Children will collect, explore, and investigate rocks. They observe and compare different textures, shapes, colors, sizes, and other attributes by the collection of rocks. They sort and classify rocks into groups and further investigate rocks based on their interests and questions. The underlying science concepts for this activity are that there are many different rocks with different purposes and characteristics, and rocks may be used for different purposes depending on their intrinsic characteristics. Be sure to use the engage, explore, and reflect components found in your exemplar activity guide. After you've had enough time to explore and investigate your rocks, make sure you reflect with questions such as, what did we learn from observing and investigating different rocks? And how are you being like a scientist? Be sure to also choose one of the ideas for further exploration so that you can continue to learn about rocks. With any new material, children may need opportunities to freely explore in unstructured ways before moving on to more directed activities. Free exploration has value to both the children and the adults. For children, 
It helps them to be able to do their own thing so that later it will be possible for them to focus on the material as a learning tool and not just as a play object. It will help them satisfy curiosity. They can learn from each other and they are able to work at their own pace and ability level and make sure that they feel successful. They can verbalize their ideas, awaken their senses, and so much more. The value that freedom that the freedom of exploration provides for the teacher is that they get to observe the complexity of a task that children set up for themselves and are able to observe how they react to difficulties in completing their tasks. They can observe what the children do spontaneously with the different materials, observe how they learn through play and which children are self-directed learners. It also gives teachers time to informally assess children's skills. After allowing children to freely explore a new item, it is time for us to do our concept with the item. So this week we are taking a look at children sorting rocks. Now it is time for children to get into groups. First, they are going to do a binary sort. Remember, that is creating two separate groups, one based on an attribute and the other set ends up being any part of that collection that doesn't follow that attribute or that characteristic. So if I'm sorting something like rocks, I might choose an attribute such as smooth. So any of my rocks that feel smooth will go over into one group or pile, and the other rocks in my collection will go into the other group or pile. Taking a look at rocks in different ways is going to help children explore their worlds. Rocks can be used in many different ways, such as buildings, jewelry, art, making roads, making decorations, and so many other ideas. Rocks are an invaluable resource for us, and people need to know about the properties of rocks in order to understand them. Just a little background information for you, the teacher, as you explore rocks. All rocks are composed of one or more minerals. Rocks can have different properties, including texture, color, luster, which is their shininess, and hardness. Geologists are the scientists who study rocks, and they group rocks into three different categories according to how they are formed. So there's sedimentary, igneous, and metamorphic rocks. Sedimentary rocks are those that are formed by layers of sand, mud, and silt deposited over time and compressed. Igneous rocks are formed from magma or lava from volcanoes that have cooled and hardened. And metamorphic rocks have been changed over time by extreme pressures and heat. However, through heating and squeezing and weathering, rocks can continually be created and changed into a new rock. And this is called the rock cycle. Our objective number three is to identify components of an engaging high interest science center. A science area is an essential part of the preschool classroom. Loris Malaguzzi, founder of the Reggio Emilia philosophy, states that there are three teachers of children, adults, other children, and the physical environment. We need to create an environment in our classroom that children feel welcome and secure so they are able to freely learn. When you are setting up a science area in your classroom, you need to think about what your goals are for the science area. Then you will organize your science center. In organizing, you're going to think about the materials and the materials that you want to have and the materials that you already have on hand. Some materials may be donated and some can be purchased. And you also may have some special items brought in for a specific topic that you're learning about. You will want to make sure that they are well organized and in good condition and that you're able to rotate and change your materials often. Some basic supplies that you will want to have in the Science Center are binoculars, balance scales, tape measures, mirrors, sorting mats, just typical items like that. 
To keep child's interest, you will need to change the materials out often throughout the year. And some of your broad concepts of science, er science areas might include the nature and animal aspect, physical and earth science, and you may also want to have some sort of sensory explorations. This can be direct, this can be done directly in the science center, or you may include a sensory area that includes a sand and water table. So please make sure to go to your Blackboard course and check out all of the content that goes along with this week's session and complete any of the activities as well as the, as the experiments that are there for you. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I hope you have a great week learning and I look forward to seeing you next time as we learn all about math and science for young children.